I thought I'd run through the announcements with you from this morning. Had a little snafu today. For some reason, at 3 minutes and 51 seconds into the service, recording stopped. I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but that's what it is. So, these are just the announcement. There's our new picture from last Sunday. It looks good. Um, our vision, our welcome. We believe that Jesus is God's son and he came to save us. We believe the Bible is God's word and the best way to know him. We believe each person should have an active part in serving God. We believe each person should come to Jesus in prayer and know him as Savior. And that is truly our hope. It's all about the man in the middle. Purpose is to help people go to heaven. These are some missions kids that we have helped support in Mexico. Um, part of our mission is to make disciples and to be witnesses for the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. We testify that he is the only one who brings salvation and the only way to heaven. Financially, I want to say thank you to everyone on YouTube and out around the country who supports us. You can give cash. Uh, checks made out to the First Congregational Church can be put in the uh, mailbox on the north side of church as well. You can set up an auto pay or Tithely app on your phone. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your giving. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at the church. Also a YouTube channel we have. First Congregational Church, Torrington, Wyoming. Um, Karen Share, we're accepting monetary gifts, but not any food items at this time. These are some Bible apps that might help you in your growing and your faith at home. They also read it to you, so that's nice. Kids Church, we had a nice group this morning. Um, we're gonna we dedicated our shoe boxes, and they'll be turned in this week. And then we're gonna do YouTube for a couple of Sundays, so. Uh, we won't be meeting at church next week or the week after. Remember Josh and Candace Rose, missionaries in Mexico that we support. And these folks at the care center, we've been praying for Dolores Benjamin. Um, she broke her ankle and needs our prayer support. And so we've been praying for her. It's Karen Grasmick's mother. Barbara Burkhart, we pray for her. Um, where she lives, there's getting to be COVID cases across the hall and around her. Lorraine Eisenbarth, we pray for her, and I haven't heard of any cases over in the unit where she's staying at this point. Ron Foos, we've been praying for him. We had a special prayer request to pray about him, and so we prayed this morning and remember him and his family and hope he stays well. For Barry Jones down in Cheyenne, we want to remember to pray for him. And uh, for Rachel Schreiner, we pray for her. She has COVID cases in her hallway as well at the care center. And People are just really needing support and love. So we've been praying and praying and hoping they're doing well. For a little bit of fun, there's our last year's, our 2018 picture. No COVID then. Here's our 2020 picture. And still, I want to say thank you to everyone who comes and supports church and can be with us. Uh, just for fun, where are you going, Big Bird? I'm going to Pennsylvania to teach them how to count. <laughs> Doesn't matter which side you were on. I don't care. It's just funny. Uh, wow, a 3,000-pointer. Show off. Anyway, hunting season is here, and I just thought that'd be fun as well. Well, I want to change it a little bit, and uh, we'll uh, stop there for a few minutes. Pretty good. And then wave to the camera so everybody sees you. Everybody sees you. We want to see who you are. How you're looking. How you're doing. Like that. Yeah. 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 All right, let's see, a few announcements. We're uh, thinking to take a couple weeks off here and uh, do YouTube Church with a virtual Thanksgiving parade. So a virtual Thanksgiving parade works this way. 
you take a picture or a short video and you send it to me. So I'm going to email out, does everybody have church email? If you don't have church email, write that down, your email address, and then I'll be sure to send it to you this week so you have a church, you have my email, or my text message, or my messenger. And then you send me a short video clip, or a picture of your Thanksgiving dinner, and then I'll put those together, magically somehow, with the help of Anna probably, and we'll put that on YouTube so we have a virtual Thanksgiving parade. Okay? Now talk to your neighbor, tell them how you're going to take a picture and when you're going to do that. Thursday, Friday, what's it going to be? Go ahead, tell them. Tell them what are you going to do? Virtual Thanksgiving parade. Okay? All right. Messenger, text message, or email. Okay? And I'll put those together. All right? We'll take a few weeks off and uh, do YouTube church, and uh, I'll let you know, keep you posted. If you don't have church email, we send out emails to everybody, and we do that by hiding the, your email address, so not everybody gets everybody's address. So if you don't get church, you don't get emails from the church, make sure I get that information, and we'll be sure that you're on the list, okay? Uh, my phone number... Quick, put it in your phone. My phone number if you don't have it. You ready, ready, ready? I could have put it on the board, but I don't want to. I'll just tell it to you. You ready? My phone number? 307. Are you surprised by that? 307. 575. 575. 307-575-1224. Okay? All right, that's my phone number. So you can text or uh, email or messenger. Messenger. Don't send it to me on Facebook. I do not get that. Facebook, I don't want to work that hard. Get something off of there. So you got those three choices, okay? So uh, next week we'll do YouTube church. Then we'll do our YouTube virtual parade for Thanksgiving. And then I'll let you know where we're at and see how things are going after that, okay? Thank you so much for that. Thanks for being here today. I love it. Love it. Today our shoe boxes were due. Oh, there's another one up there. 42 shoe boxes. Thank you. That's pretty awesome. Way to go. Way to go. Okay. Um, what else? Well, good evening. I'm at home and... Uh, we have to redo the church service today for some strange reason. As you'll hear later on, the uh, service recording stopped at three minutes and 51 seconds into the recording. So I don't know what happened or why, but it was a really great service and I'm, I'm sad in my heart that it didn't get uh, recorded. So I have a clip that Carl helped me redo. Um, he came up in church and talked and it was very nice. So I have the slides here that we can go through and I have my Bible. And I want to pray for you and pray with you uh, before we start our church service. Father in heaven, thank you for opportunities to witness. Thank you for the good that you have blessed us with. And my prayer is for everyone listening tonight uh, around the country that your spirit would minister to them. Your Holy Spirit would be with them and touch them. Father, thank you for a good church service today. And uh, we pray that you will walk with us and you will keep us and we will stay with you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, glad you joined me, thank you so much. So I'm gonna be talking. It says, uh, we give you thanks, God, and this is kind of our Thanksgiving service today. We've decided for the next couple of Sundays at least, we're gonna hold off on going to church and we're going to have YouTube services. We had uh, several people at church have come down with uh, COVID, others have sinus infections, influenza is moving around and different things are happening. And we just want people to be really safe. If we can help, that would be great. It's not that we're afraid. We know Jesus and we trust God in all of this, but uh, also it's wise on our part to be considerate of those who might have health concerns. So we're going to hold off for a few weeks and we'll keep touch with everybody by uh, 
Facebook, uh, Messenger, text messages, or email. So I want to give you that information as well. If you would like to call me, my number is 307-575-1224. Again, if you'd like to contact me, my number is 307-575-1224. And you can text. You know I'm at school, and so send me a text message, and we'll try to keep touch that way. If you don't get the church email, please text me your email, and we'll be sure to get you on the church email list. We protect those by sending blind copies out so nobody else sees your email. But that's the best way to, uh, that will inform just the people who are part of our church family. So know that. I'm going to check something quick. Yep. All right. You can see here we had a nice uh, song we gathered together. Hymn number 517. I'm not going to sing all these for you this evening, but I just want you to know we sang them. We gathered together. It was nice. Uh, for the Lord's blessing. This is a Thanksgiving song, of course, and it was just a nice time to sing that together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. We ask questions like, which do you prefer, sweet potatoes or mashed potatoes? So you can talk about that. We sang Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. God has set us free through the power of Jesus Christ in his amazing grace. And then we said, uh, thank you, Lord. Which do you prefer, cranberries, the berries, or the jello, jelly stuff that you buy in the can? So a lot of people said they don't prefer that at all. So maybe we won't even have it at our Thanksgiving service. Anyway, then we sang, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for me. So we give thanks. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. He forgives my sins. Amen. He washed them all away. He has saved me from eternal separation from God. Alleluia. I'm so grateful for that. And he gives me everlasting life. Amen. This world is over. That's where I'm going no matter when that is. Today we prayed for our shoe boxes. We had uh, 43, I think, shoe boxes brought in. I know there's a few more coming, but um, we prayed over them and the kids brought them down and we had prayer. And then we had the Lord's Prayer together. Then we sang the doxology and then the kids went downstairs for Kids Church, which was great. Again, thank you for your faithful giving. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to not um, be concerned about church finances. We have decided to just uh, possibly decided, I shouldn't say that, but uh, hold the budget as it is again for next year. And that would be probably wise. Um, everyone's done so well to help support and take care. But in this time, we just never know what will change. So the board members are speaking about that. And I, I think it's a great idea. But thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving and for your missions giving and your offering receipts. Probably almost up to another $1,000 coming in for that too. We had prayers for different ones and uh, we mentioned the care center. We prayed about those folks. We prayed for the Holly family. Linda Holly passed away, so we prayed for their family. I'm reminded to pray for Teresa's mother. She's gonna have surgery uh, coming up here. Soon, Ron Surratt, we prayed for him. He's supposed to have knee surgery on Tuesday if uh, the hospital will take him. Um, they're busy down in Laramie, Cheyenne, Scotts Bluff, so it's just quite a deal. We prayed for Marv Heyman. He had a knee replaced, uh, my principal at my school. We prayed for Jim English, the assistant principal at my school. He has some heart conditions that he's been struggling with. So we pray for different people. We pray for BW and Tara. They're supposed to have a baby. Uh, not yet. We had fun with that. And uh, again, we don't know how soon, but we're so anxious for them to have this little baby girl. So we pray for them. Other prayer requests, just uh, we prayed for medical staff. We prayed for hospitals. We prayed for families who have loved ones in the hospital struggling and suffering and uh, our hearts are just concerned. We just have a lot of concern for people. So we've been praying. And that's one of the things we we're gonna talk about today. How do we pray in these times of struggle? Happy Thanksgiving. Now, we have an idea. 
Steve Fagler had this idea, and thank you, Steve. It's developed into a good idea. For Thanksgiving, um, you're going to take a picture or a short video clip and say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Maybe read a Bible verse or something. You're going to text that to me or message that to me or email that to me. And then I'm going to put those together and we're going to have a virtual Thanksgiving parade on YouTube. I'll put them together, probably with Anna's help, and uh, we'll all be able to say hi to each other, whoever sends those in. So please, on Thanksgiving, remember, take a picture or a video clip and uh, we'll, I'll put it together. You text it to me. 575, no, 307-575-1224, and I will uh, put those together so you have that. That would be fun. We're looking forward to that. So we started by reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, and we're going to go through these verses, but it says, what should we be rejoicing about? We rejoice about knowing Christ and his suffering. So today we talk about suffering and we talk about some other very important ideas um, as we are moving ahead in our Christian life. There's an old saying, you know this old saying, if it was easy, then blank would blank it, right? Well, you know what that says. If it was easy, then everyone would do it. Uh, we know that's so true. It's not easy and a lot of people don't do it, so we keep a touch with that. So as we go through today, you're going to see this phrase several times. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Well, look here, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. He came on the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. There's only three ships. If it was easy, everybody would have done it. It wasn't easy. It was hard. And yet he came over and he found the new land, his discovery. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Mayflower, 1620. These folks came across the ocean. The Puritans, they wanted two things. They were looking for a way to keep their children from the evils of the world, and they wanted to make a, make a living to keep them throughout their lifetimes. These are the two things the Puritans wanted. Well, again, if it was easy, there'd be a thousand ships in that picture, but instead there's just one. It wasn't easy. One group of Puritans came over. They wanted their religious freedom. They wanted these things for their children and for themselves. It wasn't easy. It was hard. And Peter talks about that today in our scripture. It was hard times for lots of those folks who came. We are not so different. We can't ever forget that. If it was easy, everyone would do it. It's the same with our spiritual walk with Jesus. If it was easy, everybody would be a Christian. It's not easy. Sometimes we forget that. We think that life is harder than it should be, but really, Peter tells us it is supposed to be that way. So today, until we come back to church, I want to give four reminders to us. These reminders not only came to me from Scripture, but they also came to me from some of our church family, and we're really blessed for this. So the first one, there are good people in this world. Do not forget that. There are good people who are willing to help everywhere in all kinds of places. Sometimes in the midst of listening to the news and the media too often, we forget there are good people in the world. Number two, be helpful. And as you're being helpful, many people will come to trust, to love, and look at us, and we can bring them closer to Jesus. Our goal, our purpose of our church is to help people go to heaven. So this is one of the ways we do that. Number three, pray all the time. Pray all the time. Don't stop praying. Keep praying even if you're good at it or you don't feel very good at it. Pray all the time. Trust Jesus always is the last one. Don't ever stop trusting. Jesus is our savior. He's promised that gift of heaven. Don't ever stop trusting. So what kind of person will I be? I talked about this and I just love these two dumb pictures, so I'm gonna show it. Am I gonna be that kind of person or am I gonna be that kind of person? Come Thanksgiving, am I that kind of person or am I that kind? Which is it? Which is it? Which way do you look? Now, lately, I've been feeling sometimes like this, and I want to be positive and happy. And I picked on Lana Schmick, for instance. She's one of the science teachers that I work with, and she's always so positive, and she's so optimistic. And sometimes I'm pessimistic like this, and I'm not doing very well, and I just think, God, help me to be more like this and not always like this. But there are times we feel this way, and we certainly understand. So what kind of a person will I be? 
So we're talking about today. Live for God even in the suffering. So I want to talk through the scriptures just for a moment. And I, if you'll open your Bibles or have your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. I just love this portion of scripture. It's right at the end of 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. Peter says, dear friends, again, he's referring to us in the way that he knows, he wants us to understand that he has suffered through these things and he understands what we're dealing with. Dear friends, not enemies, not bipartisanship, none of that. This is dear friends in the faith. Do not be surprised. Don't be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering. The world is full of trials. The world is full of suffering. The world is full of pain. Death is part of our world. Sickness is part of our world. Struggles are part of this world. And I get amazed at how often I think my life should be perfect, but it's not gonna be that way. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. As, in other words, Peter's saying, as though it's out of the ordinary that we're going through hard times. Don't be surprised at this. Peter is offering to us this encouragement. He says, think practically and think logically. The world is full of these struggles, so don't be surprised that we're going through them. Verse 13, he gives us this, but rather than be surprised, rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. It's hard to rejoice when we're suffering, but Peter tells us to do that rather than to focus on the surprise factor of the trials and the suffering. He says, rejoice in this suffering so that when our healing comes, we may find glory, the glory of God. We had a friend down in Colorado who in September went through the COVID thing and he was younger than us and he ended up in the hospital and they said it was by the grace of God and by a wonderful physician who was aggressively treating the COVID that he, he lived. He didn't think he would. And that was what's fun to read about that a little bit is that they were, they were overjoyed by the glory that God had given, that had blessed, overjoyed. Verse 14, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. And I asked the question this morning at church, how much do you wanna be blessed? A little bit of blessings or great big blessings? You see, insulted for the name of Christ, if I get that every day, I get a huge blessings every day. But if I don't get insulted for the name of Christ, if I get insulted because of something I've done, that is not going to get a blessing. The result of being insulted for the name of Christ is a blessing. It says in verse 14, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon us. We want the spirit of God upon us. So we carry the name. We carry the name of Christian. We carry the name of Christ. Verse 15, if you suffer, it should not be for these reasons. If you suffer, it should not be for this. Verse 15 says, it should not be as a murderer. If I choose to kill someone and I go to prison or I'm suffering for that, that was my choice. It's not the same kind of suffering as it is for being a Christian or proclaiming Christ in the world. Suffering as a murderer is a choice, an incarceration. That's what people have brought upon themselves. Believe me, it's not easy to say these things because I understand, but Peter also understand, that's why he said this. He said, if you're suffering because you're a murderer, that's a different suffering. You did that. You deserve that suffering. He says, if you deserve as a suffer as a thief for stealing other people's stuff, you deserve that suffering. It's different. That's a choice you made. Or he says, for other kinds of criminals, it's suffering comes to those who have done others wrong. We know that's a consequence in the world and repentance is the only way out of that. And then Peter adds on, or even as a meddler. A meddler is a person who gets in other people's business. A meddler is a person who's nosy, who wants to know what's going on and then talks about it. A meddler is trying to change somebody else's business, somebody else's mind, somebody else's stuff. We know what meddlers are lately as of the election. There is lots of meddlers we understand. Hey, even meddlers have made a choice and their suffering for meddling is different than what Peter is talking about. The suffering that Peter's talking about is one based on faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We suffer for his name, we receive blessings. 
not just for suffering for anything. It's suffering for Christ where we get the blessings. So be mindful of what brings upon our suffering. Verse 16, however, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. See at the bottom there, I told my family I'm gonna change my change one of my names legally. So I have to find the legal document. I wanna take and change my name to four names. Matthew Dole was my grandfather's name who died in World War II. And then I wanna put the name Christian in there and then Gordon. So it would say Matthew Dole Christian Gordon and change my whole family name so that when they read my name someday because I'm following Christ and I'm being persecuted, they have to read my whole name, Matthew Dole Christian Gordon. You see, I wanna suffer for the name of Christ. And Peter says that's what we should do. We should change our names to be Christians. Change our names as a Christian. Now, he goes on to say in verse 16, however, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name, this name. I am a Christian. I'm one of Christ's followers. I bear his name. We can suffer for that. Verse 17, for it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. Now, I'm not gonna judge other members of the family of God. I'm gonna judge myself. I'm gonna judge my heart in light of who Christ was and his suffering. Verse 17 says, for it is time for the judgment to begin with the family of God. Peter said these words 2,000 years ago, and then people were suffering. They were suffering for following Christ. Their family members were being killed. They were being put in prison. Peter himself was put in prison. He was whipped many different times. He would go hungry many different times. And finally, on his death, Peter was said, they told him, we're gonna hang you on a cross and you're gonna die, just like the Messiah you claim to follow. And Peter says, oh no. He says, this isn't gonna be easy. This is gonna be hard. Peter says, turn the cross upside down. I'm gonna die upside down, not like Jesus did. Peter understood that life is hard. And as a Christian, it should not be easy all the time. It should not be simple all the time. Our faith leads us to God, but it does not lead us out of trials and sufferings and struggles. Verse 17, for it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? The outcome for those who do not know God and do not know Jesus Christ as their savior, the outcome is bleak. The word of God tells us, Jesus himself told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father. Nobody goes to heaven without Jesus as their Savior. So the outcome is bleak. Verse 18, Peter says, and it is hard for the righteous to be saved. We gotta know it. It's not easy to do these things. It's not easy to live this life. It's not easy to be a Christian. We'd rather do all kinds of things that we just feel and wanna do, fulfill the desires of our flesh and be part of whatever the world's doing, but that's not who we are. That's not who we are. We are Christians. So it is hard for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, verse 19, Peter gives us this. So then, because it's so hard, those who suffer according to God's will should, it doesn't say give up and walk away and go home and find an easy couch somewhere to lay on with a blanket over you. Uh-uh. It says... So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator. In other words, Peter's saying, step up bold, step up big, keep going, don't stop going. He says, and be encouraged and commit our lives to the, our faithful creator. And then he ends by saying, and continue to do good. It's a remarkable, remarkable thing that Peter gives us. Reminder, there are good people in the world. Be helpful so that many will come to Jesus. Pray all the time and trust Jesus always. That's our reminders. Number one, there are good people in the world. Carl has a story for us and he's gonna share it. And I really love this story because it really blessed me this week. And so I'll play this Carl story in 
and I'll fit it into this part of the service. If suffering brings opportunity for the kingdom, then we want it. If we have to go through some hardship, but it allows for God's grace to be given to someone else, we want that suffering. We want it. This is Carl's picture. He's going to tell you about what happened. It doesn't look very good, but Carl's doing well. But I really appreciate his faith and his stepping up to tell his story this week. So I'll insert that in here. Hello, Carl and I are sitting in their home and we're visiting as uh, the problem was again, as a reminder that the sermon didn't record properly. And Carl told such a great story that was so meaningful to us that I asked him to record it again and he was gracious enough to do that. So I'm happy to be here with Carl. So Carl, we were talking about um, there are good people everywhere in the world. And in these days, we don't want to forget that. It seems like our troubles are somewhat outweighing that. So you had a mishap this week, and I'll show a close-up of that. Okay. Or I did already. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But Carl had told us the story at church, and I'd like him to share that again. So Carl, you and Marge were on your way to Walmart. <clears throat> we, we went shopping at Walmart. And the way we do it is we each get a cart, and we go in and Marge actually shops and I kind of just get exercise wheeling around the <laughs> store. But I did buy a couple of little things. Yes. But I'm always done way earlier than she is. So I went out and I took my cart back to the cart rack. Yeah. And then I turned to come back to our car and there was a white pickup park there and it had a long trailer hitch. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And so I hit it and I went down. Oh. And so... I'm there down on the pavement and this man comes along and says, sir, are you okay? Let me help you up. Yeah. And so I'm bleeding and he's trying to help me up. And I said, my glasses are here somewhere. And so he found them. And I said, I don't know where the lens is. Yeah. And he found that. Yep. And so I felt good because if you have glasses, you really need glasses. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm starting to get up. He helps me up and another man comes out and he says, I have some gauze in my car. Yeah. Let me get some gauze and you can put that on there and, and hold it so it stops bleeding. Yes. So I said that'd be great. And so he went and, and did that. And then a lady came over yeah. and uh, we all have masks on. And she came over and she said they have a lens crafter or they have a glasses store right in Walmart. Right. I'll take it in and see if I can get them fixed. I said that that'd be great. So Meanwhile, they kind of moved me over to the car and I was able to sit on the passenger seat and people are helping me and uh, the lady comes back with my glasses Yeah. and they're fixed. And I was so grateful for that. And she said, are you from Wyoming? And I had my Wyoming mask on. Oh yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, I am. And she oh. said, uh, my daughter played for Tom Anderson basketball there. Oh yeah. And uh, she said the first year my daughter got pregnant hmm. and then uh, she she kept her contract and Tom let her play uh, two more years. And so they had a little girl and a few years after that, her uh, partner, the daddy of the little girl yep. and her got married. Yes. And now they have a child and the, the lady was just crying, just, hmm bawling, telling me this story. And so we tried to hug each other the best we could. I had to gauze, <laughs> she was grabbing me and, and she said, uh, there are some good people in the world. Yeah. Because I told her this is like a miracle for everybody to help me today. And you know, being Christian and we talked about that for a little bit and it was very moving for both of us. Yeah. So I felt, I felt better, I knew I was gonna be all right. And, in the meantime, I thought I should call my wife. Yes, yes. Does that make sense, you know? <laughs> so I called her, but you know what? She didn't answer. And huh. the reason she didn't answer was she did not have her phone on. Oh, so, she was taking more time. <laughs> yes, and so two Walmart guys came out and I 
<laughs> I think they were going to make sure that I wasn't going to sue them about anything. <laughs> and they said, well, Paige, we'll page your wife. What's her name? I said, it's Marge Rupp. So inside the store, Marge hears, a Marge Rupp, go to the car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so she does. She doesn't know if I had a wreck or a heart attack <laughs> or what, but but she comes to the car, and by that time, you know, I was I was easily stable. Yeah. And so she just parked her cart somewhere in the store. I said, go check out. I'm okay. She checked out. And in the meantime, I thanked everybody. And it was just a wonderful moment that I had that many people helping me. Yeah. And it was like a miracle. In, in all things, big and small. And God was there. And that lady and I had really had a nice moment together. Yeah. And so uh, I ended up at Quick Care and... He glued some pieces together, and and I'll, I'll be just fine. <laughs> yes, I mean, I know people, everybody has fallen, and so I'll be just fine. But it was a wonderful moment in my life, and, and a chance. You don't know when the opportunity will be for you to talk to a Christian and to witness about your faith. Yeah, we talked about that at church, Carl, was when you and this late, dear lady begin to talk about miracles that she was able to open up about some things in her life that Christ had blessed her with. And I think it's really amazing how in this world, in this day and age, people are willing to do that when we know we have that commonness of being Christians. So she obviously felt very comfortable with you and safe with you. We didn't know each other. We couldn't see each other. But the feeling was wonderful. Hmm. And we really connected on a level and we both, it was just so much love there in that minute. So in First Peter chapter 4, we were talking about suffering today. And Peter talks to us about the fact that we should rejoice in, in our suffering. And we should be with Christ in his suffering. And Carl, we don't want to suffer, do we? We want to avoid no. that. But you fell down and you got hurt and you were suffering. But in that moment, God blessed you with both others ministering to you and you were able to minister to someone else. So the question I asked you this morning and you were so good to answer, was your suffering worth that moment of being with Jesus and helping people? It, it was. It was a wonderful, wonderful moment for me. So if we're willing and we open up and we trust God in all those circumstances, he will help us and he will let us be, help him, won't he? I believe that. Yeah. Carl, your, your story this morning just really blessed my heart and many others at church. I looked around and there was a few people wiping tears out of their eyes as they, they know what you're saying. First off, when you hit the hitch, I asked everyone how many of them have hit the hitch on their pickup. And almost everybody <laughs> over 50 raised their hand. So we had that glorious reminder to us of how many of us have hit the hitches. But the other part is to be reminded, Carl, you were so good to share that with me this week and with us. There are lots of good people in the world. And we don't want to forget that. And God blesses us with them. And God allows us to bless them. I think that your message today was wonderful because we have to remember there are a lot of good people in the world. Yeah. Carl, thanks for the time together to do this. Sure. Hey, what we didn't do at church was pray for that lady. Father in heaven, we thank you for this dear lady and the gentleman who helped Carl at the store. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us with so many good people. So bless her and her family, we pray this Thanksgiving. Help Carl to heal. And bless them. Keep us, Father, we ask in your precious will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. I love you. Love you, Matt. I hope you enjoyed Carl's story. It really blessed my heart. And at church this morning, it really blessed a lot of other people's hearts. Sometimes we forget, but there are a lot of good people in the world. And we need to be one of those. In fact, Peter ended this chapter four with those words and continue to do good. So thank you, Carl, for telling us the story. Number two, be helpful so that many will come to Jesus. Number three, pray all the time. Number four, trust Jesus. Number two, be helpful so that many will come to Jesus. You know what, I'm having a problem. I've gotta be careful. I need to stop complaining about what I do not have 
and rejoice about what we have and share it. I'm guilty of this, and that's where I already told you about Lana, my co-teacher. She's so good at not complaining, but trying to find a way around things. I just admire people like that, and I think about different ones. There are so many problems. There are so many things going on that are not good, and I'm trying to find a way to stop complaining, but at the same time, be helpful. Bring opportunities or options or something, but we get so frustrated. So number two, I need to be helpful so that many people will come to Jesus. I don't want to chase people away from the kingdom. Just for the sake of complaining about a situation in the world, that's, that's smaller than the kingdom of heaven. So be careful about my complaints. There are lots of good people in the world. Be helpful so that many will come to Jesus. Pray all the time and trust Jesus always. Number three, pray all the time. What reminders do we have that help us think about praying in our lives? Some reminders that we have. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. In other words, all day long. And I promise you this, if you're praying without ceasing, you're thinking about God and you're gonna be making better choices and you'll be doing things that will help people in the world. So pray without ceasing. These old time pictures, maybe you remember it. This is a picture that says uh, communion in prayer. And this one hung on my grandma's wall as I grew up as a boy, I remember seeing this picture. And it reminds me that I need to be praying as well. So this one's communion in prayer. This one, also my grandmother had, this one's gratitude in prayer. And I didn't even know these had names, but now I do. And I remember these old pictures and I think about them. And these folks show praying and, and it reminds me, I need to be praying more. I need to be praying without ceasing. I need to pray always. So there are good people in the world. Our church is filled with them. You're good people. You're watching this. You know good people. You know really great people. As you watch this, be helpful. Be helpful for many to come to Jesus and pray all the time. Number four and the last one, trust Jesus always. Do not stop trusting Jesus. Here's some things we need to trust Jesus in. When I'm having a joyful situation, I need to keep trusting Jesus. In my suffering, keep trusting Jesus in his suffering. When we're all together, we trust Jesus together. When I'm all by myself, I need to trust Jesus. And in all circumstances that have comes our way, we need to trust him. Don't ever stop, stop trusting in the power of Christ, in the miracles of God, and in the faithfulness that comes our way. I see the heavens and I look to the sky and I say, Lord Jesus, are you coming today? And he says, well, maybe, how you doing? And I say, well, I'm a little grouchy. He says, okay, I'm not coming yet then. Fact is, I trust Jesus. We wear his name. Verse 18, reminder, it's hard. It's hard for the righteous to be saved. It should be hard. That's what Peter is telling us. We should be going through these difficult times. But for us, the hardship is not the circumstances or the events that we're suffering with. For us, the hardship is that we get to keep going, even when it's difficult, but keep shining the faith that God has blessed us with. We shine Jesus in the hardship. Is your life hard? If it's hard because of something that's not about God, that's not necessarily the right difficulty to be facing. Our life should be hard because of faith and because following Jesus. So be careful what makes life hard. If I'm doing things that causes my own life to be hard, murder, thief, criminal activities or meddling, then my suffering's on me. But if I'm doing it for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, that's what God brings blessings. God will bless. Verse 19, so in the difficulties of all of this, commit our lives to our faithful creator and continue to do good. What an amazing message Peter gives us in 1 Peter chapter 4. Verses 12 through 19, what an amazing message. Commit to these ways. Commit to continue to do it. Don't give up. We're not gonna give up. There are lots of good people in the world. All the time I see. I need to be helpful. And as I'm being helpful, talk about Jesus. 
I need to keep praying. Sometimes I pray and I think they're really great prayers and sometimes I pray like the widow praying over her son as she lost his life. Sometimes we pray and we don't even know what to say and the Holy Spirit will come by and he'll say, I'll pray for you. I'll talk to God for you. Just keep praying and trust Jesus always because at the end of it all, we will be in heaven together. And that's the most glorious thing in the whole world, our eternal home. Saw these, uh, Maggie, our daughter-in-law's parents do these. It's called Bible Study Fellowship, and I didn't think about it for a long time, but there's a lot of different Bible studies that you can do in your own home, on your online or your phones. They do this one on their phones, and it's a really cool way to study the Bible and have somebody help guide you through it. I can't do all this for you. I don't have this technology in place, but there are companies and people who have done this for the kingdom. So think about something like Bible Study Fellowship for your own life and your own faith development. It's just amazing how many wonderful opportunities there are. We have much to be thankful for. Don't forget that. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have given us, all that you are doing for us, and that you are in control of this world. Whether it's political or economic or medical or spiritual, God, you are in control of all of this. And we thank you for that. So, if I don't see you here on earth, as we trust Christ together, I'll see you in heaven. What a glorious promise that is. Keep that above everything else. Then we ended by singing this song, God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet again. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet again. God be with you. I love you. Thank you for joining me. And uh, God's blessings to you. We'll have YouTube Church together. And uh, we'll look for that. Again, my phone number to text me is 307 307- 575-1224 and uh, I look forward to our virtual Thanksgiving parade. That was our church family. I like that picture a lot. Well, I want to pray. I want to pray. Father God, thank you for being with us. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving us and Holy Spirit for the ministry in our lives that you give to us. You have blessed us. And we bear your name in honor. Thank you. I pray the Lord's Prayer with you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I love you and God loves you. Stay well.